This is the ultimate guide to gradients in Illustrator. Everything you need to know to make custom gradients, even ones with transparent fades, that you can create so you can apply them to shapes or text in your artwork. Plus, I show you how you can save your gradients so you can use them again in other files. Lastly, I show you where you can find tons of cool gradients already built into Illustrator. So, if you're frustrated with gradients in Illustrator, this is a must-see tutorial. Be sure to like, leave a comment, and share it with others. And be sure to set aside 20 minutes or so, or just pause it if you need to, and get ready to really dive in and master gradients in Illustrator once and for all. Hello, creative. It's your graphics girl of graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with P, H, and S. Girl with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand. But first, how would you like a free cheat sheet? I thought so. Head over to graphicsgirl.com to get your free Illustrator cheat sheet that will show you all the shortcuts in the program. Even learning a few shortcuts will save you so much time and make you look so much more professional. Just click the link below. By definition, a gradient contains at least two colors. It may appear as though there are other colors in the gradient, but it has to have at least one color flowing into another. Of course, there's no limit to how many colors you can have in a gradient. We think of things like a rainbow, for example. Just look how many colors there are in this gradient. Applying gradients to your artwork can give the illusion of depth as it emulates how light hits a subject. There are a few gradients already built into your swatches panel that you can show by coming to Window, Swatches. I'm showing these here. You can see that there's a black and white, blue to white, pink to transparent, and a radial gradient that's white to orange. First, I'll start by applying one of these default gradients to an object, and then show you how you can make your own gradient and save it to the swatches panel. Not only that, but you can then apply it to a shape and then modify it even further. The possibilities really are limitless. So who's ready for some gradient fun? When applying a gradient, be sure to have a fill and no stroke on your object. So when you create an object such as a rectangle, it will have the gradient inside. It is possible to apply a gradient to a stroke. If you didn't see it, I would check the stroke because perhaps you applied it to the stroke and not the fill. So here I created a rectangle with my shape tool with just a solid color here, black. Next, in your swatches, there should be one called black to white. And come now to the fill. As you're hovering over the different colors in your swatches panel, you'll see a gradient that says white to black. It's also located here for you in your swatches panel. So with the object selected, you are able to apply a gradient from the swatches panel just like you would any other color because these default gradients have been saved to your swatches panel. So here I have my object that has a white to black linear gradient. So now let's take a look at the two types of gradients. With your object selected, go ahead and choose the gradient panel. To show your gradient panel, come to Window, Gradient. With your panel up and your object selected, you can see that this gradient moves from white to black. There looks like there's gray in the middle, but that's the actual gradient between these two colors. So when you're looking at the gradient panel here at the very top, you'll see that there's a type field. From the dropdown, you'll see you have an option for linear or radial. So linear gradients can go from left to right, right to left, top to bottom, bottom to top, or corner to corner. So you can change the angle of your gradient right here in the gradient panel. It's a flat fade from one side to the other. Let's contrast this with a radial gradient. I'll select my rectangle here and hit delete. 
And now create a perfect circle by choosing my ellipse tool and holding the shift key down. So this is a circle that has a linear gradient applied. Because this object is cyclical, a better choice for its gradient would be radial. It's creating the illusion of depth to make this circle look more like a sphere. So with my object selected now, you can see the colors haven't changed. If I come to my swatches panel or at the top, drop down from the options menu, you can see there's a radial gradient called summer that you can apply. If I come to my gradient panel, you can see the type says radial. So here in the gradient panel, it shows you the type, orientation, and take a look at this bar. That is where all of your colors are. These little icons here are known as the spray cans. In this radial gradient, we have one color that's white and another color that's orange. You can change the location of these spray cans by clicking down and dragging. I'm going to go ahead and click on my orange spray can and move it in. So now you can see there's more white before the first spray can and a little bit of orange after the second one, but there's more. Not only can you change the location of the spray can, but there's also a slider in the middle of these two that you can also change the location of. Here, if I push my spray cans back to their original position, I can modify the location of that midpoint to have less white and more orange or more white and less orange. So if I click and drag on the location of the midpoint between these two colors, I could also change that location in the field called location at the bottom of the gradient panel. So midway between these two colors would be 50%. So now if I had a cyclical object like this, but I wanted instead of orange for this color to be black, all I do to modify or change the color is double click on that spray can. Here, I can change it to black. Same thing, if I wanted to change the color of this slider, I could choose a different color. Whether the gradient is radial or linear, you have the ability to change the color as well as the location of the spray cans. But wait, there's more. What if you wanted to add colors to that? In the example that we gave before of the rainbow gradient, I have all of these colors. So how did I create this rainbow gradient? In my version of Illustrator, I don't have a rainbow gradient as one of the default gradients. Here's how I can add a color to my rainbow gradient. I'll move the location of these gradients to make room for one more that I'll add at the gradient slider. To add a color, you just click down directly below that gradient slider and voila, you've added a spray can. So to remove a spray can or delete it, you just grab it and some people hit the trash can, but I just grab and drag it off. So to add, you're clicking in the gray area below your slider. It's not on the slider, but rather below the slider that you click and it will add another color. Once you've added a color, you can double click it and change that color. Here, I'll make it white. So you can really see it, I'll make it hot pink. Dun, dun, dun. So just like before, you have the ability to change the location of these spray cans as well as the midpoints between these two colors. So once you get your gradient to exactly where you want it to be, it would be a shame to lose this and have to recreate all of this all over again, wouldn't it? So you might want to save this gradient that you can also now see in your fill at the bottom of your toolbar to your swatches panel. So all you have to do is grab that color and dump it into your swatches panel. So if you've already created an object with the gradient that you want, you could take it from the fill and drag it to your swatches panel. All I did is left click down on my fill at the bottom of my toolbar and drag it into my swatches panel. If you have quite a few swatches here, you have the ability to resize the swatches panel. 
so that there's more room to show your solid colors, your gradients, and your patterns. But you also have the ability at the bottom of the swatches panel to show just gradient swatches from this icon right here. Then it only shows you the gradients that you have in this file. I'm going to go ahead and show all my swatches again. So swatches are saved with the individual file, not the program. So if you've created a gradient and saved it to your swatches, it's only in this file unless you add it to a color library that you can share among groups or workstations or among multiple files. One shortcut if you don't add it to a library is just to copy it from one file, create a brand new file, and paste. Once I paste this object now, it's in this file's swatches panel. But another question I get often is how you make a gradient look as though it's fading to nothing. So with that, with my object selected, I, I can come to one of the other default gradients, this one called Orchid. And I can click down and apply to my rectangle here. It looks as though it's going from pink to white, but that's only because my artboard is white. Here, I'll prove it. If I make another shape behind this shape and fill it with a solid color such as black, if I move it to the back with Command or Control, Shift, left bracket, it now is behind my other shape. You can see here, it appears to fade to nothing. That's how you know this is actually fading to nothing. Another clue is that you can see the checkerboard instead of white. See, my white to black gradient actually showed that one color being white. If you can see the checkerboard, that's a visual cue of transparency. So how did they create this? I'm gonna come back to my gradient panel, clicking that, with my object selected. It shows this gradient and the checkerboard that's apparent. So to create transparency, you wanna select the color or spray can. And it's here under the field called opacity that you could drop it to 0%. So at 0%, it drops it to nothing. So in addition to the swatches panel and gradient panel, in order to create unique gradients, you'll need one other tool, and that is the gradient tool found on your toolbar. So I'm gonna reduce the white that's in this gradient, and I'm gonna double click my blue to change that color to black. So I'm gonna decrease the amount of white so that it's a small amount of white in this big black circle. If I wanted this location of the white to change, I could change it here, or I could use my gradient tool to literally place it exactly where I want it. So you'll choose the gradient tool, click down and drag out. You have full control over the length of the line. Longer lines, greater. Smaller lines, less white. Here, I'll copy this circle, paste it in back, make it larger, change my color here to blue, use my align panel, set a selection to make it centered. Are you seeing the eyeball now? No? Less pupil? See, looks like an eye, right? I could add a gradient to the blue to give it dimension. This is the iris and that's the pupil. Seeing it now? All right, so getting back to the gradient tool. When you place it down and drag out, are you seeing this line here? Here, it's an exact copy of this gradient slider that we had. I could click down and change the location of the spray cans as well as the location of the midpoint. You're seeing it? Not only do you have the ability to make it a longer or shorter line, but you have the ability to go off the object as well, to extend it beyond that object's edge. So this works for radial gradients as well as linear gradients. Let's take a look at this bar that I created to the right of this. So this object is comprised of a rectangle and an ellipse. And in this shape, I have a linear gradient that I made negative 45 or at a 
diagonal. I place the location of the highlight or white in the middle to line up with the object below to give the illusion that the light hit this object and it's being refracted along the top in this way and down the side of the bar in this way. This gives it the illusion of being a cylinder. So I can change the location of these in the gradient panel or with my gradient tool. Once I select my gradient tool from the toolbar, you can see the sliders right here. As I roll into the slider, I have the ability to change the location of either one of the end spray cans or of the white in the middle. Similarly, I have the ability to change the midpoint of each. But if you're using the gradient tool, you could click down and extend off here you have the ability to change the orientation just like you did in the panel or you know here if i wanted to make it across the entire shape it might be easier to choose the gradient tool and the long click down and drag out the entire length of the shape versus trying to guess what the degree or orientation of the gradient should be so you click down drag out and you can place the orientation or direction of that gradient and if you want to click down and drag off the object that also works. I do this type of look when I'm doing a page curl. So I have the ability to click down and drag down. If I hold my shift key that keeps it completely perpendicular or minus 90 degrees. If I click down on the left, hold my shift key and extend across, that is a perfect zero degree. Same thing for diagonal. If I click down and hold my shift, it constrains it to 45 or minus 45 degrees. So with the gradient panel and the gradient tool, you can create shapes that have depth and dimension with gradients. And you can apply gradients to text too. Here, I've typed out the word horizon. And in order for the gradient to appear inside the letters, it doesn't work to keep it in its editable state, meaning if I click on the gradient here in my swatches palette, it doesn't apply to editable text. My fill color looks like I applied it, but you need this to be outlined first. So if you want to apply a gradient to text, you'll have to come to type, create outlines, or command or control, shift O. Now that the copy has been outlined, it's as if these are individual shapes. Because this is a script, you can see where the letters overlap. For a smoother look where all of this is one continuous shape that you fill with a gradient, you could use your Pathfinder tool and unite these shapes. You show your Pathfinder panel by coming to Window, Pathfinder. Now that this is one big shape, I'm gonna go ahead and come back to my preview, Commander Control Y, or View Preview, and now I can show my swatches. I happen to have this gradient that we had before saved. I'm gonna modify it by rotating it 90 degrees. Let's say I wanted to change one of these colors to be a metallic color not found in my normal swatches panel. Well, you're in luck because Illustrator has swatch libraries for common colors, such as metallics. When you come to Window, Swatch Libraries, it's right here that they have colors for metal. So selecting that gives you a palette for just metallic hues. So what I can do here is select my object and instead, instead of double clicking this where it brings up my swatches, all I have to do is select one of the spray cans and dump my chip into that color. Pretty cool, huh? But one thing you might notice about this when you're applying gradients to text is that you might need to add another copy behind it to give yourself a stroke. Here, my text doesn't have a stroke, it only has a fill. If I hit X on my keyboard to toggle the stroke to the front, I could apply this color to my stroke. And that helps 
see the text. But word of caution, when you apply a stroke on the same letters that you use to have a fill, the stroke actually eats into the letters. Here it's not as noticeable. So a workaround for that could be to copy it, paste it in back, which is Commander Control B, and then apply your stroke. You can always increase the thickness of your stroke and change the end cap on it. But there's one more thing about this that I don't like from a design standpoint. And that is that the gradient fills the dot of the eye when in effect it should be light brown, right? It shouldn't contain the entire gradient if it's part of the same word. So you might need to make what's called a compound path and then fill that one shape with your gradient. To make a compound path, you come to Object, Compound Path, Make, or Command or Control, 8. Now it picks up the tones that were at the top of that gradient. So that's how you fill text with a gradient utilizing the metallic swatches built into Illustrator applied after a compound path. But wait, I have a bonus gradient tip to leave you with. To create this gradient, we used colors from the metallic swatch library. What if I were to tell you that, oh my goodness, Illustrator has an entire swatch library dedicated to gradients. <laughs> I know that was mean that I didn't show you that right away, but I wanted to show you how you could create your own gradients. So if I go ahead and show gradients, let's say brights, now I could choose a subtle gradient that Illustrator already has created in their brights gradient swatch library. And they have so many gradient swatch libraries. Look at all of these. So if I come to the Color Combinations Gradient Swatch Library, I could choose a different gradient. Or this one called Simple Radial. Mmm, nice. Nice, right? So now that you know how to create your own gradients, if you want, you could use the built-in Gradient Swatch Libraries in Illustrator. I myself am a big fan of the Gradient Swatch Library for foliage. So that's everything you need to know about making, applying, and saving gradients to use on shapes or text. And now you know how to make your own gradients or utilizing the built-in gradient swatch libraries in Illustrator. So if you found this video helpful, give it a like, Woo! share it with your friends, and please subscribe to my channel. And don't forget, for free marketing, branding, and design resources, head over to graphicsgirl.com. That's graphics with P-H and S, girl, with no I and three R's. And I'm here to help you design your brand.